Hey, what's happening guys? I've got a really easy project for you today that I think you'll find is pretty cool. You're going to need three things. You're going to need uh, WS2812, also known as NeoPixel Matrix. This is an 8x32. You don't need one this big. This just happens to be what I have. You're going to need an Arduino. Again, it doesn't have to be an Uno. You could use a Nano. Pretty sure you could probably use a Micro too. And you're going to need a large glass jar that your strip can fit into. Let's go over to the Arduino IDE on the computer and we'll talk about how to set this up and get it to work. I think you'll get a kick out of it. All right, when you got your components set up and ready to go, and I'll put a link to uh, everything but uh, pickle jar down below, you're going to need your uh, Arduino IDE. I am using uh, version 1.8.15, but it should work with just about anything. Then we're going to want to go to uh, Manage Libraries, and you're going to want to make sure that you have uh, two particular libraries installed. And those are the Ar Adafruit NeoPixel and the Adafruit GFX. So type in Adafruit. Neo Pixel. And if I spelled everything right, uh, yep, it's right here. Adafruit Neo Pixel. And the other one that you're going to want is Adafruit GFX. And that's this one right here, the Adafruit GFX library. If you don't have it, simply click install. It will install it. And then it's always a good plan to reset your, your Arduino IDE by shutting it down and bringing it back up. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to examples. And there's no programming involved here, so don't, get, don't be frightened. We're going to come down and we're going to find Adafruit NeoPixel. And we're using strand test. Okay. So we just need to tell it a couple of things. Uh, what pin we're connected to. In our case, we are using pin 3. And the other thing it needs to know is... Does it need to know how many? Hang on. Yeah, it needs to know how many... Uh, NeoPixels we have in our case it is 256 with our 8x32 and then the particular effect that you saw there was called theater chase rainbow so what you want to do here is just come into where it says uh, void loop and put two forward slashes in front of everything except the effect we're using Now you could leave these up and, and upload it all. It'll take more memory, but you will get some different effects. Just like that. So that the only thing in uh, our void loop that is running is in this case a theater chase rainbow. You could do it with uh, single colors. You see here they have it done in white, red, and blue. If you'd rather have a single color, you could just choose one of them. It's that simple and then all you have to do is upload it. All right, let's go put it in the jar and see what happens. All right, once you've got everything done and uploaded, what you're going to want to do is if you want to use your jar with a cap, you're going to need a hole in it. So if you're a youngster, you know, get mom or dad to help you out. You don't want to be hurting yourself. A drill is probably the best way to do it, but just to show you, you don't really need a drill. Knife will do just fine. All right, you're also going to need a power supply. I forgot if I said that. You can use batteries or you can use a wall wart. We're going to use a wall wart in this case. This one is... Six volts at one amp, which should be fine. You can put up to about 20 volts into the Arduino, but you're really taxing the uh, 
the voltage regulator that high. I, I generally wouldn't recommend going over 12 volts. If you can find a 9 volt, you know, that's probably really where you'd want to be. All right, so next up, we want to make sure we have our Arduino connected properly. That means um, the red to 5 volt, your ground, which in this case is green and white to ground, and your data pin to wherever you decide to put it. We're using pin number 3. And we're going to plug it in. Maybe. Try and get everything in the right direction. Yep, there we go. We're going to plug in our power supply. Hopefully this one will work. Never tried it, so don't really know. But it should be alright. Yeah, it's fine. Well, that's interesting. There we go. Yep, working fine. So, it doesn't get much easier than this. Now, there's a couple on this particular one of exposed wires. Now they're no longer exposed. So what we're going to do is just kind of roll this bad boy up in here like so. So that we can get it into the pickle jar. And once it's in, it can uh, it can go ahead and expand and fill the jar. Ah, it's being finicky. All right, hold on. A little more pulling and twisting here. Got her now. Yeah. So now that is in the jar. Next, we need to take our power supply wire, put it through the lid of the jar. And attach it to the Arduino. Big giant mutt hands in there. Make sure those power wires are kind of out of the way. All right, let's change the angle and have a look. All right, you want to find the most presentable side of your light there. And then we'll Plug her in. And what you end up with there is a, uh, in my opinion, a pretty cool little feature light. Now I'm seeing blue. Turn it a little bit. Now we're getting kind of a purpley. There's a yellow and a red. You could find a some way to maybe etch the glass, get a little bit of diffusion going, you know, something along those lines would be cool. But yeah, they are, they are changing colors slowly, cycling through the color spectrum. Yeah, I think it's pretty cool. And it's a super easy project that, you know, if you're new to Arduino, new to electronics, you can put together less than a half hour. I guarantee if you do this project with your kids or your grandkids, they are absolutely going to love it. And if you love it, I hope you'll give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. Big thanks to you for watching. That's it. I'm out. Peace.